Today, popular hip-hop and graffiti artist MC Yogi credits yoga for saving him from a path toward self-destruction. In his new memoir, Spiritual Graffiti, the world-renowned yoga teacher and artist shares his story, and we're very glad he's here with us. Please welcome MC Yogi. It's good to meet you. Hey, Thank you very much. I'll do the same. Me. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about your life before yoga, your, your kind of young beginnings. So I, I was what you would call a juvenile delinquent. So I was getting into a lot of trouble, kicked out of every school, failing all my classes and getting arrested for painting graffiti. And then I was sent to live in a group home for about two and a half years. And when I was 17, after all that, those years of depression and anxiety and, and trauma and stress, I stumbled into my first yoga class thanks to my dad. And uh, when I did that first yoga practice, it was like someone had turned on a light switch. And every, I have two questions, so yeah. I, I want to back you up for just a minute because you made a connection there that I think people sometimes skip over or don't hear, that a lot of this acting out and the behavior that was destructive in your life came from an area of pain. Yeah, a lot of suffering, a lot of, um, just a lot of stress and anxiety and I didn't really know how to sort of work through all those difficult emotions and feelings and yoga gave me the tools and the technology to really work with what was going on inside my heart, inside my head, inside my body and to really kind of filter through it so I could be uh, more calm and relaxed. So instead of ratcheting you up with yeah. aggressive discipline, yoga had a different effect. How did your dad know to do that? Uh, I don't think he did, to be honest. He was just uh, trying what he could? Well, he actually did it in a really um, backwards way because he told me <laughs> that I shouldn't go to yoga. He said, ah, you probably won't like yoga. Perhaps he knew you well. So it was reverse psychology. <laughs> and that's what I needed because I was really rebellious as a mm -hmm. teenager. And I saw what it was doing in his life, and I, I got attracted by his example. So it wasn't even so much what he said, it was what he was doing. And what you experienced. Yeah. When you went and you experienced yoga for the first time as a beginner, I mean, it's not always easy it's when hard, you're It's hard, man. My whole body was yeah, shaking. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's way harder than anybody knows. What, what was it about it that was so appealing? I think for the longest period in my life, I'd been looking down. You know, my, my energy was just down. And then something happened where I went to the class and they said, inhale, reach your arms up. And all of a sudden it was like, I had forgot to look up. I'd been looking down the whole time. And when I started to look up, it literally changed my outlook on life. I felt, you know, more happy, more energy, more vitality. And Were you surprised? Yeah, I was shocked. I, I didn't even know that it was possible to feel that good without <laughs> drugs. <laughs> <laughs> good lesson to learn, right? Yes. And so where did it go from there? What made you try to pursue this and become so excellent at it that you could teach others? Well, I never set out to be a teacher and I really credit my teacher who has now passed away. His name was Larry. He used to travel and teach yoga to the Grateful Dead. And um, he took me under his wing. He was my mentor. And he really encouraged me to teach yoga because I really didn't think I would ever teach yoga. Um, but yoga became like that, that key in my life that started to open all these doors that I didn't even know existed. And it connected me to people and, and, and experiences and I traveled around the world, went to India and since then I've taught yoga in China and the Forbidden City at the White House. That's and amazing. All over the globe and it's really, I, I really credit yoga because it's, it's led to this incredibly magical, inspiring life that I never would have experienced otherwise. And you didn't leave behind your other artistic pursuits. You've been able to kind of weave this all into a melange to mix metaphors that, that's a very rich life that gives you a lot in a lot of different directions and then gives you a chance to offer that to others. How would you describe the, the mix of your artistic impulses? Well, when I, when I really devoted myself to, to studying and learning everything I could about yoga, studying in India with my teachers here in the States, um, it just started to affect everything that I was doing. My, my, cause I grew up uh, as a cartoonist and an illustrator and mm -hmm. artist, and I was painting graffiti, and and I was making music from an early age, since like 12, 13 years old. So the yoga just started to infuse everything I was doing with this new energy and this new creativity and vitality and wisdom, and it just started to express through everything I was doing. <laughs> so we're looking at a pictures of a concert where all of this yeah. is coming together <laughs> in this kind of magic. Um, to explain what's happening here. So this is, this is, you know, we perform at a lot of music festivals. My wife is also an amazing street artist. She's a muralist. She paints 10,000 Buddhas all over the world. And we travel together, teach yoga, um, perform music, and share our art. And um, this is some of the festivals that we've been to over the years. Um, it's a lot of fun, man. It's, you meet so many cool people. And, you know, so many people come to yoga because they're, they're working to heal something in their life. Right. Uh, 
So it's just a really great community. Okay, now I cannot do yeah. any of those things <laughs> we just saw. So can I still get something out of yoga if I'm a beginner? If I don't know what I'm doing? Yoga meets you where you are as you are. So no matter where you're at, any physical condition, because it's all about just becoming more present, more open, more calm, more relaxed. And so one of the easiest things that anyone can do is just exhale to the count of five. Can we do it? Let's Shall do it. We make, would everybody like to participate here? Let's, let's get calm together. It's, it's easy. <laughs> so we'll start with the exhale. Breathe all the way out so you're completely empty. Then breathe into the count of five. And really feel the breath moving your mind back into your body. And then exhale to the count of five. And just start to measure your breath. So five count inhale, five count exhale, so that the inhale rhymes with the exhale. And the more we do this, the more it starts to balance and level the brain, helps to calm the nerves, strengthens our lungs, and reconnects us with that power that's breathing for us. That power that beats our heart, heals our wounds. It's a universal energy of love and healing. And another thing you can do is just bring the palms together like this. And that helps to dissolve all the conflicts between left and right. All the extremes on both sides. And we, there's so many problems in the world today. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could just all come into the center and just give love and be more kind and more forgiving? So that's really the blessing of yoga is to make us uh, more calm and relaxed so that we don't react and get caught up in all the negativity. So it's that easy. That brought tears to my <laughs> eyes. Thanks. Thank you. MC Yogi discusses spiritual graffiti and teaches a yoga class at Sanjo Yoga Seattle tonight, beginning at 7. The event is sold out, but please visit our website for more information about the center and how to keep up with MC Yogi. Thank you very much. Thank you, Margaret. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be right back.